So today's comment comes from Green Team BC on YouTube, and it's uh, it was from one of my videos where I was talking about rolling with women, which those videos stirred up so much of a ruckus, which surprises me because I didn't feel like my ideal, and it was very controversial. It was like, <laughs> like if you go with a woman or a smaller, like less physical person, man too, right? If you go against someone that is does not have the physical ability to match up with you, you know, maybe you turn it down a little bit and not break them. You know, that was the idea. <laughs> you know, take care of your training partners so that they stick around so that this way they can become something later on. I mean, it's a crazy idea, isn't it? But, <laughs> you know, I always wonder this. I always wonder, like, when people send these kinds of messages, because as the channel's gotten grow, uh, bigger, I've really noticed the amount of people just like talking trash on the internet. I always wonder, I wish I could see if that person trains, you know, or if they're just talking trash on the internet. I, my, my gut feeling is that they probably, a lot of them don't train. I'm sure some do, but I think a lot of them probably don't train and they're just talking trash on the internet. But anyway, I digress. Green Team BC's message is women versus women, man versus man. You know, basically to say it's either one or the other. Don't, don't mix them together. Imagine practicing football and having to go half speed. You might as well go home. So, thank you for the comment, but I disagree with you, right? Because I played football, and we didn't go all the time. We didn't go hardcore every single time. We didn't sit there and line up on one end of the football field and start bashing each other with football pads. We would put our pads on and go full speed sometimes, yes. And then other times they would have like the lineman practices where they'd be going through stuff. The, the receivers would be out there running the routes and stuff like that. It wasn't just simply like bash each other in the face as hard as possible every single day. They, were, they, they would undulate the training where we might have hard days some days, and some days we had softer days and easier days. It's the same thing in like, you know, other sports too. Like look at lifting, like lifting weights. If you go lift weights, you do not go into the gym and every single day you go max effort. Your body just couldn't handle. Your body would break down. You know, what you do is you spend a lot of time in various rep ranges. You might spend time at 50% some days, right? Very, pretty light. And then some days you might work up to, you know, 85, 95% really trying to get that, that top end going. But again, you move around. You don't just stick in one rep range. You don't just go hardcore every single time. And this is something to understand as you guys get better at jiu-jitsu. In the beginning, in jiu-jitsu, your threshold, your top end threshold is so low, right? When you think about it, because you really can't get going because you don't know everything that's going on. Your body hasn't you know, de developed the ability to recognize all the patterns and the movements going on. So your ability to move very quickly is very low. And so you're getting exhausted doing very little. It's like the analogy that I've always used is like putting a car into gears, right? First gear, the engine gets going, it's whining, it, it, it's right, the engine's going, but you're going like five, 10 miles an hour. You shift gears, right? Think of that as blue belt. Now you're going a little faster, engine starts to whine, then you shift into third gear, purple belt, and so forth, so on, until you're a black belt, and you're cruising, and you're, you know, again, your engine's not even whining, but you're going faster than all the other ones. And so what ends up happening is as you train jiu-jitsu more and more, your top end ability goes up, and you simply don't want to stay there all the time, right? Just like if you were talking about like a novice lifter versus a high level power lifter, a high level power lifter that can like, you know, squat, let's say a thousand pounds or something really high end. They don't want to do that every day because that would destroy their body. They might touch that from time to time. You know, a, a amateur lifter who can maybe max out at 185. Well, I mean, they can try to hit 185 every day. It's probably not going to have the same effect on them. So again, when you're training, as you get better and better, you have to have this ability to basically undulate, right? Because you can't stay at your top end all the time and just beat the hell out of your body. And if you do, be prepared for injuries because they're going to come. You know, I mean, even me, like I'm in my mid 30s and I simply cannot train at max intensity every single day because if I, if I try to, my body just breaks down. So I have days where I hit it hard right? Two to three days a week where I'll really touch that intensity. I'll have some fun. I'll get down and get after it. And then a lot of the times I'm basically playing down a little bit where I can slow things down, play around with techniques, being very specific with my techniques, trying to develop them. And then I have those days where I go harder. You know, I think even, I, I don't, I didn't really read through the entire interview, but I think there was an interview with John Danaher where he was, who again, who's a very respected coach in the jiu-jitsu community, where he was saying something to the effect of, you know, rolling with people that are less experienced than you, less skilled than you, so that you can practice on them, right? And it has a benefit because then you essentially have active drilling, right? You're, you're drilling a technique against an actively resisting opponent and it has a benefit to it. And again, you're not going full speed. And so a lot of times when I go against people that are less physically, um, you know, imposing or less uh, skilled than me, I just won't smash them every time. Now, if they come into a competition class and we're getting after it, you know, you, I'll put some pressure on them. But if it comes to just average day-to-day -day training, I'll typically focus on more techniques and really trying to hit stuff. This allows them to play a little bit more and then to build themselves up so that they can withstand that, that damage later on. And then it allows me to work on a technique. 
And again, for me, the way that I look at this, man, is again, and everybody's got their own views on this stuff. The way that I look at this is that I have several students in my gym who we, again, before I was even coaching, okay, this is back way back in the day, like 2007, 2008, where I was helping them out. This I was doing this as a purple belt. And I was doing it because I have this idea. It's a, it's a sort of, stay with me here. It's kind of a, uh, gonna go against what some people might think. I had this idea that if I help these dudes out, then I'd have more training partners down the road, right? If I help these people get better, that right now they can't really do anything to me but if I help them over the, over the next year or so, I'm going to have some more training partners. And then we all have more training partners. And this way we can all get better. Crazy idea, huh? And then you think about it now, like a lot of my best training partners, guys that give me a hell of a lot of trouble, that catch me in submissions and stuff, I was teaching them as a coach and things like that. And again, I did this before just because I wanted to help them out because I wanted more training partners. But even as a coach, I'm still kind of selfish. I still want more training partners. And so again, it's a, it's a win-win. I help them get better and they learn how to beat my, my butt on the mat. And this way it makes me better. So it's a win-win. So again, everybody's got their idea on this, but I think that to say that if you can't go full speed, if you got to play a little bit slower, if that is a, that's a loss, I think it's a terrible way to look at it. And I think it's a way to not only like damage people and hurt people prematurely, because again, sometimes people aren't gonna have the skill level, but I think it's also a way to get yourself in a lot of trouble because if you try to train really, really hard every single day, again, prepare to run for injuries, man, because they're gonna come. Your body simply just can't train like that. No other, no other sport, if you look at the way that high level athletes train, no other sport trains at max intensity every single day. They just don't do it. So anyway, that's my my ramble, my rant about that. Um, and that's the comment. So BC, South team, whatever it was, thank you so much for your comment. Um, and guys, I'll talk to you next time.